you've got so much to say, it's called gratitude. And that's right. God, I miss the Beastie Boys. I've been struggling a lot throughout this year, and as it's marched on towards December, I am scared. I'm hurting and find it really difficult. I can't bring myself to think of the end of this month, let alone December and the holiday season. The Lord's Prayer has become this daily meditation for me, especially the part that says, give me today my daily bread. I've talked a lot about bread and breaking of bread and communion and what bread means to the anarchist video up here and how the early church devoted themselves to the breaking of bread. It's almost been a big theme lately. So looking just to my daily bread has come to mean a lot, especially when I'm really scared about tomorrow's bread or next month's bread. And here comes Thanksgiving this week. Anyone else find it incredibly difficult to be grateful this year? to gather round and commune. In the season of Thanksgiving, on the day of Thanksgiving, how do you give thanks when there seems to be so little to give thanks for? How do you give thanks when it seems to be the most difficult thing? Good times seem a distant memory and we miss them. When darkness and suffering, when the obscene and the profane when it all overwhelms or is looming on the horizon to overwhelm, well, where is the light? Where is the sacred? And how do you give thanks? What does Thanksgiving even look like anymore? Especially without division, in unity, in union. Where is the meaning in all of this seeming meaninglessness? Well, if you've been keeping up with me for any length of time across all the platforms I make content on, you'll know I've spoken to some extent about the subjects of community, suffering, shared suffering, meaning. All of those are going to be linked down in the description. And maybe just about where the presence of eternity is. Hint. It's here and now, if only you just look for it. However, I was asked recently about what my thoughts were on those who are worthy of inheriting the kingdom of God. And while I gave a pretty stream of consciousness answer to a very heavy question, as I'm prone to do when I'm thrown a question that I don't and haven't already thought of yet, I've gotta be honest, it's weighed on me since being asked, particularly in light of not just the Thanksgiving holiday, but the holiday season itself. Who are worthy of inheriting the kingdom? At first glance, I think it's easy to reduce this answer into doctrine and dogma, and by doing so, completely miss the meaning. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, where God dwells? Nothing impure, nothing shameful, nor deceitful can enter it. That's what Revelation 21 27 tells us. It is a place consecrated, set apart, holy, sacred, sanctified! Sanctified! So it would make sense that those worthy of inheriting the kingdom are also set apart, also holy. Those worthy of inheriting a holy, sacred, sanctified, and set apart kingdom are those who themselves are holy, sacred, sanctified, and set apart. And yet, we're told by Jesus that when you pray, it should be like this, meaning form and structure, or including these elements. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, here on earth, as it is in heaven. Those of you that pray the Lord's Prayer, those of you that say those exact words, do you actually even believe it? Do you actually mean the words you say when you say them? Are you looking for the kingdom come here and now, not as something someday that'll come, but here and now, God's kingdom come here and now on earth as it is in heaven? 
not just to escape to, but to establish here and now. God's will be done here and now on earth as it is in heaven. Do you mean it? Do you really want that? And if you do, what is this kingdom that we're asking to come and be here and now? What is the will that we're asking to come and be here and now? Well, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says this, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This is God's will. <laughs> this is going to be fun to say. Cairo pantot, prosecumai aria leptos, eucharisto pas. Cairo pantot literally is to be glad always. Prosecumai aria leptos is to pray incessantly. Eucharisteo pas literally is to be thankful in all or all things. Wow. So God's will is to celebrate Thanksgiving more than just once a year and more than just for America. It's America! Hey, did you catch the Greek word for being thankful or professing verbally thanks? The Greek word for giving thanks is eucharisteo. That's where we get our word eucharist. If you're not Catholic, the eucharist is the holy tradition of transubstantiation begun by jesus and his apostles at the last supper transubstantiation is when priests turn bread and wine into his real presence his body and blood you may think of it as communion and i've been talking a lot about it lately the sharing of communion of drinking wine and breaking bread. Again, just watch all my other videos or check out all the platforms I create content for. Now, I'm no Catholic, hell, I'm also probably not much of a Protestant, but I find it fascinating that the Eucharist is Thanksgiving, and Thanksgiving is Eucharist. And partaking in it, according to that verse from Thessalonians, is God's will. Maybe the Beastie Boys were right. What's gonna set you free? Look inside and you'll see. When you've got so much to say, it's called gratitude. And that's right. So God's will is to be thankful in all things. Good, bad, sacred, profane. But why? And, and what about the kingdom come? Is it just the power of positive thinking? Romans 12, 2 says this, Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may test and approve what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Well, we're told what the will of God is. It's to give thanks in all things. But again, why? Just because we're commanded to? 1 Timothy chapter 4 verses 4 through 5 say this, For everything created by God is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with gratitude. That's that Greek word, eucharisteo. For it is sanctified by means of the word of God and prayer. But see, here's the thing we need to take note of. Throughout scripture, you've got a message that God created all things, both good and bad. Ephesians chapter three, verse nine says, God created all things. Isaiah chapter 45, verse seven says, the one forming light and creating darkness, causing well-being and chaos, literally evil. I am the Lord who does all things. These. Colossians chapter 1 verses 15 through 17 says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, both visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. I kind of talked about that in my anarchy video. 
Check it out. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Lastly, John Chapter 1, verses 1 through 3 says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. Those last two passages are referring to Jesus, but they call him the Word. It's kind of funny how most Christians these days are guilty of committing the atrocity of equating the Bible itself to the Word, even though the Bible itself never refers to itself as the Word, but in fact always refers to Jesus as the Word. Almost like idolatry of the text itself. But I digress. Anyway, in the Word, again, Jesus, all things hold together. Word in Greek is Logos, literally meaning spoken word, but also reason and meaning, plot, rhythm. But let's focus on it meaning meaning. When we look back at 1 Timothy 4, for everything created by God is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with gratitude, Eucharisteo, for it is sanctified by means of the word of God and prayer. If a thing is received with gratitude, that is, a spoken word of thanksgiving, it is sanctified by means of the word. What's the will of God? To pray incessantly and give thanks in all things. But if the Bible is true, and you're going to take it as such, then by doing so, we not only see the goodness of and in all things, as all things are created by God through the word that is Jesus. But by doing so, we sanctify all things. Wait a minute. There's things here. There's trees. There's rocks. There's birds. There's squirrels. Come on. We'll bless them all until we get fresh naked. The name Jesus Yeshua means God is salvation, not provides salvation, is. But maybe the word of God, the logos, the meaning behind it all, is thanksgiving, eucharisteo. What if the will of God is truly to pray and give thanks, to speak thanksgiving into the world? Because if we're to believe what the text says, and if you're one of the people that does, by doing so, by speaking thanksgiving into the world, you sanctify it. You sanctify everything you give thanks for. The Holy of Holies was the sanctuary. It is said to be where the presence of God dwelled among men. The presence of the age to come the kingdom of heaven, but in a tiny little living space. Phenomenal cosmic powers! It was the future, but here and now in the present. It was the place where it is finished, a place of goodness and shalom. Everything good and in its right place. That presence, that space where all is holy and sacred within. And there was a curtain that separated it from now, from here, divided. Separated the holy and the sacred, the sanctified and the set apart from all this obscene and profane. And then Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. And that curtain is said to have torn in two, split asunder. I believe that presence spilled out. And that presence is now everywhere, making its way into everything. The Holy of Holies is no longer in a tiny little living space, but rather the holy, the sacred, the sanctified, and the set apart is now everywhere, making its way into everything. Making its way downtown. Making my way downtown. The kingdom has come. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, here and now on earth as it is in heaven. God's will is for us to be thankful in and for all things. And the, the promise is, when you do so, all things are sanctified. Sanctified. Maybe that's the meaning for this season. This season. Maybe that's the meaning for Thanksgiving. The logos for Thanksgiving. And more so, the meaning for the Eucharist. Catholics consider the Eucharist, turning bread and wine into the literal body and blood of Jesus, the source and summit of the faith. We consume Jesus kind of like patient zero, and join with him. I've talked about what communion represents and how when we gather around the banquet table acknowledging both the suffering and the lack inherent in the human experience, the incompleteness that is an existential, ontological fact, we truly find meaning and connection. Maybe part of that has to do with the fact that the definition, the meaning behind the Greek word eucharisteo is to give thanks. It's not just to be thankful for Christ. It's that in doing so, we're engaged in the sacred. In giving thanks, we're participating in the sacred. And the sacred, according to the text, is Jesus. Yet the sacred is giving thanks. You see, according to the biblical text, the word is not only what makes things sacred, it holds all things together. And when we partake in communion, in the Eucharist, we partake of Jesus. And when we partake of Jesus, we join him in giving thanks for all things, creating all things and all ultimately sanctifying all things. So who is worthy? Who's actually worthy of the kingdom of God? Well, if you're to believe the text, then only the holy, the sacred, the sanctified, and the set apart. But guess what? If the scripture is true and you were to believe it, then you can set apart all things. We can set apart all things, make them holy and sacred through our thanksgiving. We can sanctify all things. Through our thanksgiving, we can sanctify all people. And as such, all things in thanksgiving are worthy of inheriting the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. All People in thanksgiving are worthy of inheriting the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, including, but especially, the things we might not find worthy. Maybe the people we don't find worthy. Maybe the politics we don't find worthy. Maybe our pain, our hurt, our lack, if we come to the banquet table with all our suffering and all our lacking, all our incompletion and all our hurt and suffering, and if we allow others to do the same, well then we don't do away with any of it, but instead we make it all worthy. And maybe that, in making all things worthy, in giving thanks, maybe that is the kingdom. And maybe more so, that's the kingdom come. It's already here, now. You just need to see it and live it. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, if it's already here and now, it's already a reality, see it. Give thanks, see the kingdom, sanctify all of it. After all, it's called gratitude, and that's right. Wait a minute! This thing!
things here. There's trees, there's rocks, there's boids, there's squirrels. Come on, we'll bless them all until we get the schnickered. Let's party. Happy Thanksgiving. Let's drink wine and break bread together at the same table. And the world will be better for this. And as always, for you in it. Thanks so much for watching. I'd really appreciate if you helped out my channel by doing all the things that the YouTube algorithm loves to be done with videos. You know, like comment, share, drop me a like. If you're new or haven't done so yet, I'd love for you to subscribe for more content. And hey, consider supporting me and my family on Patreon. There's a Discord server over there, unedited content, and I think it just serves as a decent outlet, at least for the time being, for the community I'm hoping to build across all platforms, boundaries, and borders. I hope to see you there and to get to know you better. Either way, have a wonderful day and just know how much your life matters.